Hi, my name is uh, Martin Woodward. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about Visual Studio Online and Team Foundation Server with Git version control. First of all, this is how you can get hold of me. You can abuse me on Twitter or uh, send me email, martinwoo at microsoft.com or you can see my blog. If Team Foundation Server is really the thing for you and you want to know Team Foundation Server in the morning, in the evening, at night time, then uh, come to radiotfs.com, the podcast I do. So, uh, yeah. Um, I will be taking questions. I'm a very informal guy, so please, questions as we go through. Uh, if for the people listening online, I will be doing questions uh, questions after my session. I'll go and answer any questions there. Okay. Oh, I wrote a couple of books as well with Ed. Uh, not that that makes me or Ed particularly experts. We just know some clever people. So uh, um, there's a 2013 book coming out eventually as well, hopefully. Okay. I work on the Visual Studio team. I'm an engineer on the team. Um, in fact, my title is a uh, program manager, which is strange because um, I don't really program much anymore. I'm a manager, so we managers don't program, you know. Uh, so, uh, so I don't program much anymore, and um, I don't actually manage any people. I have no direct reports. I manage the program, uh, which is Visual Studio. So uh, I don't know what that means I do. Mostly it seems to mean I delete email, but uh, I guess I do have manager in my title. So. Uh, I actually live, I, I, <laughs> I, I work remote. I work uh, in my house in a, a field in Northern Ireland. So there's the view from my office. Actually, that's not the view from my, I work from home. Uh, you can see why, that's the view from my home where I work. Microsoft do give me a um, office in Belfast. It's not as nice as the office here in Vienna. Uh, there's the view of my office in Belfast, and uh, actually, the um, the th that is where I sit there, just next to that big warship. So just on the corner, uh, in the middle of a hole, uh, which is uh, Belfast. Uh, this here, that's uh, that's actually the. The Titanic Museum, There's, if you ever go to Belfast, it's a great place to visit down at the bottom. And anyone watch Game of Thrones? Have you seen Game of Thrones? Yeah? Okay. That's actually filmed there, believe it or not. That's the studios, Titanic Studios, where they build Game of where they film Game of Thrones. And don't let this worry you, but where we build Visual Studio, you notice there's a Titanic Museum. Uh, there's the Titanic Studios. This hole in the ground here, next to where I sit. This hole is actually where they built the Titanic. So, uh, as we say, it was fine when we last touched it, is what we like to say. It's worked on my machine. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, we'd built, and now we're building the next version of Visual Studio. It'll all be fine. Don't worry. Okay. The rest of my team, actually, the people that actually do programming, uh, they live, 50% of the team live in North Carolina in the United States. And then the other roughly 50% of the team work over in Redmond. So I, as a, a program manager, I'm on my own in, in Northern Ireland, and I work remote with the team in uh, North Carolina and in Seattle. And I could not have done that without the technology we have today, obviously, you know, with uh, we use link video conferencing all the time. We use uh, a Team Foundation Server to build Team Foundation Server, as you would expect. And it works very well over the remote area network. In fact, one of the uh, interesting things I've had happen recently, um, I'm, I'm not a particularly tall guy. I'm quite small. Uh, because we use link all the time and I work remotely with my team over link, I walked into, I was just in Redmond last week and walked into a meeting and uh, a developer just looked, saw me and just looked very disappointed. It was now luckily developers lack all social filters, so they just say what, they, what he was disappointed about. And he went, you're a lot shorter than I expected. 
Uh, and, and that turns out it's an interesting phenomenon. I've noticed that because in Link you're, uh, you're always at eye level with somebody, you know, if you're a tall guy in the Netherlands, you assume I'm a giant because you're a giant, whereas if you're a short guy, you, you, you assume everybody's taller than you anyway. So, so now in Link, my notice says, uh, warning, objects in Link may be shorter than they appear. <laughs> so, thank you. Anyway, but we're not here to make fun at me. We're here to talk about uh, the Team Foundation service, Visual Studio Online, and also Team Foundation Server. Most of the demos I'm going to do today are on Visual Studio Online, visualstudio.com, will where, be where I'm talking. But that's just an instance of Team Foundation Server. All the demos I'm going to show you today work just as well in the on on-premise version of TFS 2013. The reason I'm showing you against the cloud is because I'm lazy and didn't want to set up a development environment, so I just let Microsoft host my development environment for me in the cloud. Um, but it works just as well in Team Foundation Server 2013. But we obviously provide a whole set of services. Ed showed you lots of things, you know, the agile planning, the team rooms, the build systems, test management, continuous deployment. Today we're going to focus in my session for the next uh, 50 minutes on source control. Now, um, in uh, the world today, if we look around at the whole version control market, not just Microsoft's version control market, but all of version control, there are uh, three fundamental approaches to version control. Who here is using uh, who used Team Foundation Server 2005? Let's start. Who was 2005? Great. Got the scars to prove it. I can tell. <laughs> Who was 2008? Let's see. Okay. A few more. 2010? Okay. And then who's using TFS 2012 today? Okay. Wow. Great. So, uh, there are three, three basic modes of version control. The first mode is all that Team Foundation Server used to do originally was check in, check out version control. So you go to the source code repository, you download a copy of the latest version of source code, then when you wish to edit a file, you say, excuse me, server, can I check out, please, can I edit this file? The server says yes, or the server says no. And you then edit the file on your local machine and check that file in. Two people can edit the same file at the same time. The second person coming in has to merge the changes. Uh, but it's a, a check-in, check-out model. Now, that's very good for scalability. And the reason we have it inside Microsoft is because that's the version control system we needed inside Microsoft uh, to scale to people like Visual Studio team with millions of files to scale to the same kind of workflows that say the Windows team or the Xbox team or the Exchange and everybody, all those big teams use. Oops, sorry, press the wrong button. There we go. All right, there we go. Um, so it's great for large, very, very large code bases and great for very fine-grained permission control. You can control the permissions on every single file and every single folder. It also allows uh, good monitoring of, you know, which files do, are people working on right now? Which files do people have checked out? You can tell all that information when you use the check-in, check-out model. And it's great for the kind of code systems that, that we run inside Microsoft. So uh, very large integrated code bases and ones that need a high degree of auditability. So that need to, uh, a high degree of control and auditability. The second mode so that's, ooh, he says, <laughs> that is, uh, there we go. That form of source control was Team Foundation Server. That's all the source control that Team Foundation Server had in it until TFS 2012. So many developers, when they think of TFS, they think of source control and they think of that mode of source control. But in TFS 2012, we introduced uh, s local workspaces. And that uses the edit commit mode of version control. So basically, you connect to the server, 
you download the source code, but that source code is writable locally as soon as you download it. You can edit it. And then when it comes to commit time, you so there's no checkout operation. You do not check out code. You never talk to the server. And so you come to check in code, and you say check in. And the machine compares your local files with the files on the server and sees which versions need to change. So that's great for offline support. You, know, you don't have to talk to the server uh, to check out code. And what makes it great for developers is you can use lots of different tools with files that are in a local workspace. You can finally fire up Notepad or Photoshop or any form, any tool that just edits the file and then check it in when you're ready because there's no explicit checkout operation. And as that one works really well for medium sized integrated code bases, so code bases up to say uh, 100, 200,000 files. It depends how fast your hard drive is. Because remember, when you go to commit, it actually has to scan your hard drive to see what's different between, the, you know, what's changed. So depending on the speed of your hard drive depends on how big a code base can be. But it's a fairly linear growth, so you know it's 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 fairly easy to change, and it's just a, a setting change to switch between the two. And this gives a balance between a uh, very fine path level control. However, you can no longer um, you no longer get told when somebody has started work on a file. The server doesn't know when people are editing a particular file. They just know when people check in a file. Also, you can't allow somebody to read the source code, have it on their local file system, um, but not not be allowed to check in. You can set that up, but it doesn't. You know, it's not no use because you can still edit the files locally. Okay, so let's just quickly show you local workspaces because there's a, a couple of cool features. Now, this is going to be fun because um, my my real laptop that's running this presentation isn't this laptop. So this is exciting because it wasn't projecting very well. So I borrowed Andreas's machine and my laptop sat upstairs. So let's see how it goes when we do demos. So um, let's just go on to my machine upstairs. And I'm actually going to close this because believe it or not, I had the live stream running, which is quite frightening. So there we go. We're running behind and uh, I can hear it talking to me. And there we go. That's better. Right. Okay, so this is my uh, machine upstairs, and I just want to quickly sign back in again. If I now I can't actually talk and type passwords at the same time, otherwise I'll tell you what my password is. Okay, there we go. Right, so here we are. So this is a local works. Uh, this I'm connected to Team Foundation Server on my machine, and if I go to my workspace, oh, just quickly. Hello, everybody. This is Visual Studio 2013. Yay! You know, um, it's fairly similar. Uh, a few differences. Um, there's a different icon, which is good. Always handy. Uh, it's like Visual Studio 2012, but with color. Is what I like to say. Yay! There we go. If I go to the pending changes view, um, here's a nice feature. You can actually undock pending changes now. So uh, I can actually pop that out. And then if I wanted to, I could have my pending changes always available to me while I'm editing my code. Uh, and I could be in work here. So you can see you can have uh, source code. So if I start editing a file, I'll show you in a second. Uh, you can have all your files that are changed on a view constantly. You can just pop those out. You can do the same with uh, builds. So if you go into builds, if you want to keep a list of your build definitions, you can just pop that out and, and always have your builds available inside Visual Studio. When you're running 1280 by 800 screen resolution, which is what I'm doing here, probably not advisable. But when you're on your big desktop at home, it's a very handy feature. So let me just close that. I'll, I'll just stick to one window because we haven't got that much room. Um, and this is a, uh, a server workspace. So if I go in, it, it, I know this because it warned me it was a second ago, but if I go in here and just quickly look at these files, so we're going to Hello World, let's look at README, and we'll do Properties, and you see that file there is read-only, you see that? 
And then, oh, okay, there we go. That tagged himself on my head. There we go, okay. This is a problem when I'm on somebody else's computer. That's exciting. Right. Uh, in fact, let's just make sure we don't have any more of those notifications, shall we? Let's go on. There we go. That's there we are. better. Right, okay. Um, so, I, yeah, that's a server workspace, which everybody knows. I want to convert this into a local workspace. And luckily, it's a very simple operation. Very, very straightforward. If nobody knew where this was, I'm surprised. You go into Manage Workspaces, Edit, Advanced. Uh, there we go, finally. And you know, there you can switch it from local to server. server to While we're here, some other interesting uh, permissions for you. You can actually change, we have a notion of public workspaces, so multiple people can edit the same files on the same machine. Useful for sharing a machine. And then this file time option, not many people know you can do this in Team Foundation Server. Uh, in the older versions of Team Foundation Server, when you downloaded files locally, the, the timestamp of the files was set to the time that you downloaded the files. You did a get for the first time. If you set that to check in file time, when you do a, a get, a download, the files on your local machine, the, the time is set to the time which they were checked in at the server. So if you're doing X copy deployments and things, then that's the setting you probably want. Um, so anyway, let's leave it current. Well, I'm going to switch it to a local workspace. I'm going to click close. And now it's going to convert this to a local workspace for me. But we can see it's a very easy change because it's the same kind of version control. So now when I go and look in my folder, so go to sample, hello world, right click, properties, we see, woohoo, it's no longer read only. So that means you can do these crazy things. So you can now, for instance, in Visual Studio, if I if I just double click there. So we see there's my pending changes, no changes. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, uh, hello, Welt. There we go. That's about as good as my German gets, I'm afraid. Uh, my Deutsch is there schlecht. That's all I know how to say. Okay. When I, as soon as I hit save, read me appeared. Did you notice that? Let's get rid of that. Hit save. So when I haven't changed the file, the file's not changed. If I go, <laughs> bizarre. This is like, it's a source control that actually makes sense. Uh, hello, Vel, and then hit save. Ready? I'm going to press the save button, let go. Ta-da, woo! <laughs> so you know which files you've changed by just looking in that window in Visual Studio. So if you go and edit web config in Notepad, it just works, it just shows up. Um, it's actually even cleverer if you use the, the shell extension, so Windows Explorer, and you use Eclipse, and you use Visual Studio, and you use the command line. All of those things actually secretly talk to each other using inter-process communication. So you don't even have to press refresh on your machine. You know, it just all works. It's actually just logical. It's amazing. So I'm going to come in here, delete that. Hit save. So no pending changes. Here's another thing. Who has worked with people where they've said, ah, TFS has deleted all my files for me. I do a get latest and they don't arrive. Ah, you know, a fundamental thing of source control. It should be really easy to actually download your files and get them locally. Uh, what we found was so occasionally somebody will do this. So you're in... Uh, you know, you, you're working away, blah, 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 and you'll accidentally go and you'll drag drop a folder and it doesn't move. Oh, uh, uh, oh no, I've got it open currently, haven't I? Sorry, let's go to somewhere else. Let's move this one. So you're in here. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff there. So I accidentally go and I move my images folder. I just drag and drop it somewhere by mistake. And, and then somebody's, oh no, TFS deleted my files. No, TFS didn't delete your files. You moved them. But anyway, I'll forgive you. You thought that. Um, but the user now wants to, how do I recover? So in a server workspace, the user would have gone and they would have come down to their code and right-clicked here and done get latest. But because you never, with a server workspace, you have to tell the server what you're doing. 
So if you did get latest, the server would say, well, you didn't tell me about drag dropping those files from one folder to another. You've got the latest, as far as I'm concerned, because you haven't told me you've done everything. And so you do get latest, the server says, all files are up to date. And you, no, they're not, <laughs> they're not there. What do you do? Now with a local workspace, because it's actually comparing the local version with the server version, when you do get latest, to the the images are back. It actually gets latest, so you know, little things. It uh, just makes it a lot less friction. So they're local workspaces. I just wanted to show you that, because um, there's quite a lot of little things in there that people don't know, and there's, there's all sorts of handy features as well. So we'll just, that'll do. Okay. So that's the the two basic forms of um, source control we had until recently. So check in, check out, edit, commit. Now those source control approaches are both what's called uh, centralized version control. So I like to say with Team Foundation Server, you have the best of breed centralized version control system. If you want to work in a check-in, check-out mode, like we used to work with SourceSafe or PVCS or ClearCase or whatever, then you can with TFS. If you want to work using an edit commit mode, which is more familiar to people, say, from a, a subversion background or a, uh, or a CVS background or modern Team Foundation server, that's easy. Every, f every mode, every workflow that you want to do with a centralized version control system, you can do with Team Foundation Server, and it works very well and scales. But when we look around at the source control market, we also saw a distributed version control. So distributed version control is different. With distributed version control, when you connect to the central repository, you actually download an entire copy of that repository, every single file, every single version onto your local machine. Now for some people that sounds crazy, but it's actually really, really useful. Because now when you have that source code locally, you can do operations on it, view it, history operations, commit, all while offline, all locally. If your machine is down, the central server, if you don't have access to a network, that's very easy to access. Another advantage of distributed version control, because you have the entire repository locally, a branch in distributed version control is in, oh, I should show you, I'll show you in a second. A branch in centralized version control is a, is a, a folder. In distributed version control, a branch is the entire view of the repository. So when you switch branches, you're switching the view of the repository. And that makes branching simple to understand because it's kind of a different view on my repository rather than folders. But because you have a copy of that repository locally, you can actually branch locally without ever having to ask permission of an administrator. You can do a branch locally. And so we find people with distributed version control use workflows where they are doing branches a lot more often locally because they're a lot less... Uh, heavyweight and they can just do them without asking for permission, merge those changes into their local version and then, and then submit them. So whereas in centralized version control, whereas in TFS, you might use a shelf set in Team Foundation Server to store a copy of your code and keep a copy of your code to, to be able to switch context. With distributed version control, you would probably use a local branch to be able to switch context easily. And I'll show you that in a second. Now, distributed version control has a great offline experience. You can commit offline. You can view history offline. You can do everything offline, apart from share changes with your colleagues. For that, you obviously need to share them in a central repository. Um, and there's this simplified branching model I mentioned. One thing from a, again, I'm an engineer, I'm not a sales guy. W one thing that's actually really useful about distributed version control is the history is now portable. That's huge w in terms of avoiding vendor lock-in because now your history of your changes comes 
with every on it is on every everybody's desktop. If you want to move between uh, providers of distributed version control, you can do that. And when you push those changes up, you're pushing up your entire history. So with distributed version control, you're no longer there's less lock-in to a particular vendor's you know product because you need their system for history. With distributed version control, history goes with you. And that portability of history is actually uh, a really key consideration and, and has other benefits later on. Now, because you're taking a copy of the entire repository, you don't want your code base doesn't want to be a massive multi gigabyte version, you know, just for for the single version of code. You want your repositories to be much more modular. So with a distributed version control system, a repository, rather than having every solution ever in the entire company, tends to be just around about the solution mark, is around about you know, one solution per repository or two or three solutions in a repository. They're a lot more modular. And so a company, a, a, a team, would typically have multiple repositories that they are looking after. Um, it's also really, really useful for, dis for integrating with open source projects. If you have a copy of an open source project that you use in your, in your, your application, rather than just taking a copy of the version, you can, take, you can clone their Git repository, have it locally, and then when you want to pull changes from the upstream project, you can just pull them and merge them into your code and use all of the version tooling to actually help you with those merges. So it's like having a separate... Um, you can treat the open source project as a as a separate branch of your project, but um, it's just stored outside the company. And obviously, with highly distributed teams, it's very useful because now everybody doesn't need to be connected. Everybody has history locally. Um, it's distributed version control. works very well with distributed teams. So we thought, hmm, in TFS 2012, we had centralized version control covered. We didn't have distributed version control. So what did we do? Well, obviously, with Microsoft, we won't go and build our own. No, we didn't. It is interesting. Um, we looked around the market, and we looked at all the trends, and we see that, that Git is the leading distributed version control tool. Um, when we look at the growth of Git, it was, it's growing exponentially. It's still a long way below Team Foundation version control in terms of usage. But in the open source community especially, it's growing exponentially. So version is going that way, and Git's going that way. So it's like, hmm, that's interesting. What's also interesting as well is um, even the distributed version controls like Mercurial or Veracity or you know, Plastic SEM, even the version control tools which are not Git still use Git as a a data interchange format, because remember, history is portable. So they use the Git file format to actually transfer history between uh, repositories and, and migrate history around. So that's, that's interesting. So Git's the leading tool. Git's used to interchange data between SCM tools. Fascinating. We also noticed that Git was being used more and more as a deployment protocol. So um, what by that mean, I mean, you have an application locally, you want to publish it to uh, Windows Azure websites or to Facebook or wherever. Increasingly, those providers just give you a Git endpoint and you can push your code. And it just pushes the, the deltas, what's different between your local repository and theirs. Interesting. So now, not only does our version, any distributed version control tool we build have to... Um, speak Git on the network. Not only does it have to use Git as a file format, um, but Git's also growing. And the thing we also found that's particularly important to, to me um, is that Git has great cross-platform support. Not surprising, considering it was built by Linus Torvalds uh, to, to help build the, the Linux kernel. Um, reportedly in a weekend, but that's not quite true. Uh, and um, so it's great support on Linux, great support on the Mac. But we noticed 
the only complaint people were having about Git, the main complaint people were having about Git, was the lack of support for Windows developers. And that's why a lot of people were using Mercurial and things, because it didn't work on Windows very well. I mean, I thought to myself, well, hey, we're Microsoft, for crying out loud. Rather than go build our own distributed version control tool, let's just fix that. Let's just make Git work well for Windows developers. So what do we need to do that? Well, we need to do a lot of things. But the first thing we need to do, or well, one of the things we need to do, is fully integrate Git version control into Visual Studio and fully integrate it into Team Foundation server and to Visual Studio Online. So we built Git into Visual Studio. Uh, you can get it as a plugin into Visual Studio 2012, and it's in the box in Visual Studio 2013. Every version, including Express. So a hobbyist developer at home can be using you know, Desktop Express or Web Express or whatever, and they can be doing version control even without a server, you know, they can still be doing version control, which is very important for software quality. And we also put it into Team Foundation Server. And we did it, it is Git. It is just Git, but fully integrated into TFS. So what do I mean by integrated into Team Foundation Server? Well, let's take a look. So we have Visual Studio and the Team Foundation Server, stroke Visual Studio Online, as we like to call it now. The cloud, yeah. And um, I have a project in Team Foundation Server. In that project, I say it's a TFVC project, a centralized version control project. So it's got a centralized repository, and then you have the issue tracking, builds, project management, all those repositories fully integrated with TFVC. Over on the client, we have Team Explorer, and then under Team Explorer, we've got a Team Foundation source control provider, and the TFVC object model, which is a proprietary .NET object model, which we provide. We stick into the global assembly cache, the GAC, and uh, you can use that to talk to TFS. Fabulous. That's the world as it used to exist. With Git, oh, sorry, and obviously if you're using Eclipse or you're using the command line, you can talk, you, there are providers for that as well to talk to Team Foundation Server. With Git, you create a project. So, it's a project setting is what kind of version control you want to use. It, it's not a, just a bit an individual user can flip. It's a project setting. Because we found the workflows for distributed version control are very different to centralized version control. If you try to use distributed version control and just take your code from centralized version control, push it all over, and use it the same way, then you are definitely doing it wrong and you will have problems. So we made the decision to make it a separate workflow and make people choose, yes, I want this project to be a Git project. Therefore, you s create a project with a different workflow. You say you'd like Git version control, but that's the Git version control still fully integrated with issues, with test cases, with, with builds, with everything else that you know in TFS. It's Git version control, but s the back end, the storage, is still the same SQL database that your TFVC data is stored in. It's still the same Active Directory you're using for um, permission management. It's fully integrated into Team Foundation Server. On the client, we still live in Team Explorer, but we made a, a Git source control provider available. And that's what the plugin that's available for v Visual Studio 2012. And as I say, it, it is included in the box in Visual Studio 2013. Now, interestingly, that provider, that doesn't actually talk to a proprietary object model to talk to, t to TFS. It actually uses an open source library that, that we contribute to called libgit 2 Sharp which is a fully open source library. Uh, that's a .NET library around libgit2, which is a C, uh, a C, plus, a C uh, library. Now, we contribute to that, as well as people like GitHub and Plastic SCM and lots of other people in the community. Linus Torvalt has contributed to libgit2, and Hunio and Sean Pierce and all the people on the Git project. It's the core library that you use to embed Git into an application. It's not... Microsoft Git, 
It is open source Git, but we've embedded it into Visual Studio and we are contributing. I am personally a committer on that project. And that's very different to how Microsoft used to work in the past. Uh, we actually, I, I personally contributed things into libgit2, which before uh, we, you know, we were contributing for a long time before we announced this is what we were doing because we had to build up trust in that community. That community had to build up trust in us. And so I actually had features that were checked into libgit2 and committed, got deployed on GitHub before they got deployed into Team Foundation Server. That's you know, the interesting world of open source. Um, but it was good and it's great because it means we're all using the same, the same code to talk to Git, which means that it's compatible. So if I want, I can use, obviously, libgit2 can talk directly to Team Foundation Server, but it, it can talk to a local Git repository on your machine, any Git repository created by any other tool, it talks to it. And it can also talk to any third-party uh, Git provider, so GitHub or Bitbucket or just a random network share running Git. It, it just works. And as I say, Git has great cross-platform support. It already has tooling in Eclipse called eGit. It already has tooling. Importantly, it has tooling in Xcode. Apple don't let you plug into Xcode. They don't let like anybody, even Microsoft, plug into Xcode. However, they already ship with Git integration in Xcode. So if you've got iOS developers, then having that team run inside of Team Foundation Server is actually a perfect solution for them because they can use Xcode to do source control, but then they've still got all of Team Foundation Server for work item tracking, for project planning. You can share code easily between your .NET team and your iOS team. It works really well. Finally, if you wish to move code between a TFVC repository and a Git repository, we actually have a tool to help you do that called Git TF. That was our first contribution. That's a fully open source project again, uh, but that's run by my team. And that allows you to move code between the two. Typically, we find, though, people don't actually move code between the two. If they are using Team Foundation Server as their Git repository, what they tend to do instead is link work items. So you would check in code into your Git repository in TFS, you'd commit it there, and you would say this fixes a bug which might live in project one. So you, and that, but that's how you get the traceability through, you know, of requirements and, and, and test cases all the way through. So it, it, it spans over into your Git projects and reports all back up. So let's go play with this. Yeah, it was good. Carry on. <laughs> Sorry, what was... Oh, the window. Uh, yes. Uh, I would if he was here, but yes, it is cold. I will make sure it gets shut if I can. Uh, no, it's not that. It's actually there's windows open. So I'll get them shut. Thank you. Um, and okay. So if we uh, go in... It's actually snowing outside as well, which is going to be snowing in here soon if we're not careful. When you when you're up and talking, it's I'm very warm. But yeah, okay. So um, if I go to my uh, let's just close source. So you may notice here branches in TFVC are actually you know represented in in as folders here. But if I'm just going to close Source Control Explorer, let's close this solution down. Um, I click on the little plug. I'm in a TFVC project. If I switch to a Git project, I can do that just by double-clicking on the Git project. Notice, pending changes is still, you know, it's still Team Foundation Server. Let me just switch back again. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that window in a second. So watch it. It's still just the same tool window as you're using. It's just, and that's me switching version control. There's no need to go up into some random setting, tools, options, blah, 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 git, blah, 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 to figure out what's going on. You can just do it because it, it's TFS. It's integrated into Visual Studio. And then I want to clone this repository. So this is where you take a copy of the entire repository and pull it locally to your machine. So I'm going to say clone this repository, please. Where do you want to clone it? That'll do. And that's going to get the entire source code repository from the cloud bring it down and bring it onto my local machine. So that's it doing that now. So when I do that, I actually have an entire working copy of that code base locally. 
so I can view history and do everything on it. Notice this is a new feature as well inside Visual Studio 2013. It actually shows you what solutions you have locally from your source control repository. So I can just quickly come on in here, just open up Hello World, and I'll, I'll just show you making a change because, you know, it's the same. Uh, it's distinctly just the same, really. So uh, let's just say, yeah, let's fix this, shall we? Using, the again, the only two words of German I actually know. Well, I know three, because I'm an Englishman, so, you know, zwei beer bitter. That's about the... Uh, uh, there we go. That's just for me as well. Um, so I'll save that file. We'll come in here. We'll say, you know... Wow. And I'm using a funky Austrian keyboard, apparently, as well. There we go. Oh, no. Uh, uh, okay. Let's go over to here... Control C. I used to be a consultant before I got a real job, so I know how to use Control C and Control V very well. Okay. Uh, okay, there we go. Great. So, two files. And it's just, as a user of source control, you just right click, and rather than check in, you now have commit. So I'm going to say commit. Uh, say, uh, make some changes. And we say commit. Now I've got those changes locally, and it gives you a little reminder for new users. You need to sync your changes with the server. I can make th like three or four changes, so we'll do a commit there, we'll do um, uh, uh, da -da -da. oh, well, there it is, right, I found it, <laughs> brilliant, but that wasn't the one I wanted now, uh, but we'll use it anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, Okay, so we'll add a new line, and I'm going to say, um, so I'm going to make my two changes locally. There we go. Uh, now if I go and I actually look at my changes, we can see I've got two changes locally. I could push those up to the server, or I could hit s the sync button, which is what I'll use. So I'm just going to quickly show you, uh, let's do that actually. So I'll show you how to get there easily. You click on here um, and go to web portal. Thank you. And that'll actually show you the, hopefully, the web portal. There we go. So this is connecting to uh, the cloud. Um, the web portal, as you may have seen in Ed's demo, is a lot prettier than it used to be. Um, and so here we have uh, the, the code I'm in. And if I look at history, currently those changes aren't there. So, how do I get them there? I go to my, uh, oops, wrong button. I go to my changes and I press sync. And that's going to make sure any changes from the server get pulled down. It's going to send my changes up to the server. And then if I now come in here, go to here, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to click up a level so it requires really history. We can see there those two changes that I made. If I click on a change, we can actually see that change there. Great. And if you want to, you can leave a comment on your comment. Have you seen this new feature in TFS? So you can you can say, uh, this is a cool change. And you can actually have a, uh, you know, you can actually have a conversation about the changes in your code. Notice, again, I, this is little things, but I'm, this was, I, I was on the team that wrote this thing. Notice that even the, uh, even the little, uh, the little thing there, you see the little, that even points to where you look. That even points to where you made the change. How cool is that? So, yeah. I spent a lot of time on that feature, probably too long. But anyway. Um, and you can, it's just very easy to make lightweight comments. And we actually use this as uh, a form of um, uh, lightweight code reviews between the teams, you know, just to, just to do commenting on stuff. But uh, so that's that. If I then come into here, and I'm actually going to, uh, I'll show you linking work items in a sec. Okay. So that's commit, commit. I want to show you about branching. So if I go to branches, I actually want to um, create a branch. I don't need to ask anybody's permission. I can just click on new branch, and I can branch from master, and I can let's just call this uh, feature VN. Okay, create branch. So now I've now got a local branch. So I can say in my feed, this is a comment uh from vienna and i save it 
and I'm going to commit that locally. So uh, let's just say commit in feature. Yeah, commit. So actually got that branch, that that change in that branch. And if I go to my branch, I can switch back to master. You know where the, my main main line. There's the master branch. Look at this feature VM master feature VM. You don't get any of that annoying. You know ah files have changed locally. What do you want me to do? Panic. It just it just works. You can just switch branches very simply, very easily. It's actually even cleverer than this. If I go to the command line, um. So, so I'm in the command line here, feature VN. If I do the equivalent, the, the equivalent in the Git for switching a branch, is actually Git checkout master. Look at that, master, master. I didn't even have to press refresh. Git checkout. How oh, cool is that? <laughs> So if, if people are used to using Git, if you've got developers who are used to using Git, they can seamlessly switch between Visual Studio and the command line and don't have to relearn everything, don't have to learn our way of doing Git. They can just use Git. Okay. And then um, that's, the, that's the message I was telling you about because I didn't switch it from here. It was warning me. There we go. And then what I wanted to do, actually, let's... Here's the reason, one of the reasons why you would want Visual Studio integration. So I'm going to make a change in master that conflicts. So we'll say this is a comment. Uh, now, Git makes branching really easy. Branching's never been easier. Merging, it's just as hard as it's always been, unfortunately. We can't fix that. If you two people edit the same file at the same time, somebody needs to know what to do. So uh, we'll say, um, let's make uh, in master. Save that. And I'm going to commit it. Uh, there we go, commit. So now, just to show you, I'm in master, and then Vienna, master. OK? So now I want to merge that code. I can do that without even going to the server. I can go into my branches view and I can just simply say merge. I want to merge from the Vienna branch into master. Press merge. Now it would auto merge all the things it can auto merge, but it's going to say, oh, resolve a conflict. So we'll click in here. Now, who, anybody use Git from the command line here? We've got one, two, three. I can never remember the syntax for, doing the mer for resolving conflicts. I can do the merge. And then it gives me the help on the syntax. I'm like, oh, look at this. You're going to love this. So I'm going to double click on here. I'm going to say merge. It gives me a graphical merge tool. It's like it doesn't fire up Notepad or Vim. It actually gives me, you know, and I'll say, actually, I want that one and that one. And then I want to do some stuff. This is a common, uh, here we go. Uh, that was from Master. And this is a proper editor. So, you know, you've got all the IntelliSense and things. You know, it, it's just, it is just Visual Studio. How cool is this? Hello. Oops. There we go. So, I'm going to resolve my merge, accept the merge, and that's the merge done. So then if I go back to my, uh, my changes, with, um, with, a git, you do a commit and then a merge. So I'm actually going to commit my merge in. And I say merge from feature uh, VN into master. There we go. Hit commit. Oh, I'll tell you what I wanted to do. Oh, that's, here we go. I made a mistake here. So let's get rid of that quickly. Uh, save that. I'll say fix code. And I'm going to commit it. But this time, I'm actually going to do a commit and sync. So I'm actually going to commit and at the same time push my changes up to the server. And that's quite a handy little shortcut operation we enabled. So that's going to take all of those changes and push them up into the server so we should be able to see those. Um, so we'll go over here and we we'll actually see, uh, let's redo, let's hit refresh and we'll actually see those changes coming in. Okay. 
all very well and good. This is just Visual Studio and Team Foundation server I'm showing you here. What about, you know, prove to me, Martin, that it's really Git. Okay. So I'm going to go over. I've actually uh, gone to Azure and created an Ubuntu virtual machine, so a Linux virtual machine in Azure. If I do you name, you name minus A. Oh, oh, no, I did get minus. Well, muscle memory. Brilliant. So um, there we go. It's a proper Linux machine that I'm SSH to in Azure. So I'm just going to use Git in Linux. I'm going to say Git pull origin master. This is a, uh, this is a Git repository uh, that I've already set up. Uh, to actually have be talking to you know I, I did a clone earlier so uh, git pull origin master hit return now obviously uh, that's going to pull all my changes and do a quick fast forward merge for me if I wanted to um, let's just do this make the uh, fab two. CD Fab 2. If I want to show you the um, the Git clone process, let me just quickly show you that. Where do you get the clone URL from? You click on here, uh, copy. There we go. Go back into here. There we go. And then when you do the clone, I quite like this feature. Uh, oh, hang on. I don't like that feature, but it obviously it has to ask me for the password. Wow, I'm a, hopefully I managed to type my password in using... Hey, look, even gives you a little funky ASCII art because we're hardcore. We're on Linux. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Right. So that's Linux I've showed you. Uh, and then finally, I can also, if I wanted to... Um, I mean, this is my visual... I'm, I'm connecting to my laptop upstairs. I mentioned I'm a committer on the libgit2 project. So I actually have libgit2 here. But let me clone down, uh, just to prove it's proper Git, I'm just going to clone down a repository from uh, GitHub now into Visual Studio. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to say clone. And obviously you can't use fancy Team Explorer to clone because you're using, you know, you just want to clone a remote repository. Uh, wrong one. Hang on a second. Uh, Control C. Uh, Visual Studio. Control A. Control V. There we go. I'm just going to hit clone button, and that's going to take that repository and bring that down from GitHub and clone it all locally. So you see, we it's just doing that. And it's taking a while because it's a fairly big one. But yeah, so regardless of where that Git repository comes from, uh, you can just use it and work with it. It doesn't have to be TFS Git. But if you want to take a Git repository that's hosted somewhere else and have it in TFS, you can certainly do that and merge them around. Okay. So... Any other questions on the Git stuff while we've got it visible? Just going to start wrapping up. Right then. So as I say, I was talking to Visual Studio Online. You can get access to Visual Studio Online for free. Everybody here has an MSDN Ultimate subscription, basically, because you're VIPs or MSDN. You already own Visual Studio Online. So if you want to have a play with the very, very latest versions of Visual Studio, less than three weeks old, just go and create yourself an account and play with it now. You don't need to wait for your company to have installed TFS 2013 to be able to play and just get used to this and get up to speed and evaluate if TFS, you know, if it's good for you and how to use it. Um, so it's great for evaluations and you can use it for your hobby projects as well as obviously uh, using it with your MSTN subscription. Use it for real work. So the key thing I wanted today for you to go away with is that we support choice. We support every type of version control workflow you would like to use. We support in Team Foundation Server. We've taken the best of breed centralized version control system and merged it with the, with the best of breed uh, distributed version control system. And it's fully integrated. Uses the same database backend, uses the same authentication, uses the same security groups. I just realized in my demo from the command line there, I forgot to quickly show you. Um, let's just, I'll show you one I prepared earlier. Uh, it's fully integrated. So if I go down and I see, there we go. Here's where I did, where I was practicing earlier, and, and this is what I meant to do in my demo. Um, I actually fixed, I used the uh, pound one, two, three, my commit syntax on Linux to, uh, to check in a change. 
and that actually linked it with the work item one, two, three. So you have that full integration between source code, work item tracking, builds, even if you're using the command line from Linux to, to talk through. It's all fully integrated into Team Foundation Server. And then I think we're moving on to, oh, and obviously, you know, you can develop uh, whatever development environment you want to use, you can use. It's fully cross-platform. It just all works. Okay. If you want a copy of the slide deck, Andreas will make it available to you. But if you also snap that QR code, that'll take you to a copy of the deck with a video recording of this presentation I did at TechEd. Um, so feel free. And I'll leave that up there while we just do a couple. If there's any questions. Yes. So the question was, what's the difference between push and sync? Push is uh, a proper git push. So take your changes locally and push them to the server. The, the alternative of that in git is pull. That's take the changes from the server and pull them locally. All the sync button does is do a pull first to get the changes from the server and then merge them and then push to put your changes back up. So it's just a one click button to do a very common operation which is you know pull, fast forward and then push. Great. Any other questions? Yes. So the question was is it possible only to synchronize the work items in which way between so Yeah. So, yeah, the question was, uh, I have a team using Git already. Uh, it's actually, um, if you want that Git to be, I would actually recommend, it's, it's just Git. You can, um, how you take those, that team and make them use Git stored in Team Foundation Server is just to do Git push to your Team Foundation Server and it's there. But yes, so... You need it to be there to then link the work items because only when, only when TFS has a copy of the code inside of TFS can it then know where to link to, you know, know where that commit is so you, can, so, you can, so you can provide a link to it. So if they push the code to Git, you can even have it automatically just take a copy and push it over into TFS. So that's two lines of, of, uh, of, of command code. Um, then yes, that will work just fine. No problem. Okay. So I believe there's one more session on before lunch. Is that correct, Andres? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for your time.